for centuries we've been talking about the brain and the body and we've even gone so far to train these two entities separately we have enhanced the intellectual capacities of our brain we've worked on mindset as well as strategies to change our own behaviors and for the body we have taken it to various athletic abilities however the brain and body does not exist as two separate entities in fact these body parts are very much linked and what links this together is what we call the vagus nerve and there's so many different nerves going through the body but predominantly the focus fell on the vagus nerve because it is the one nerve that is modulating majority of the functions of the body which run by itself we call this autonomic activity and if we think about the way the vagus nerve functions is that it starts from the brain stem and descends down into the into the body the ventral side goes into the heart and lungs and the dorsal side goes into the digestive function renal function adrenals and so on and uh, from there we start talking about how the brain is controlling the body and for example if we are uh, low in blood sugar it will tell the brain that uh, we actually need food so it changes our behavior so we start looking for food and if we feel threatened um, our adrenals fire up and it goes into a state of fight or flight and all these functions we see that the brain is giving information to the body on what action to take however what is being more and more understood recently is that majority of the information traveling in the vagus nerve in fact 80 to 90 percent of the information traveling in the vagus nerve is going up into the brain in fact the body is what is controlling the brain and once we start understanding that the brain and body is very much connected it does not really make sense to train these two components separately when we just talk about strategies of the mind when you talk about mindset we find that we have a very strong focus a very strong belief or a very strong structure that is developed by the mind but it might not be congruent with the body and so when we start forcefully doing things or when we start pushing ourselves further than the capacity of the body we find that there is resistance that develops in the body and over time this resistance can become uh, abnormal and can become into a disease and we find that this separation between brain and body the further this separation becomes the more disease there is both mental physical and physiological when we start to connect the brain and body and we do this through heightening what we call is the vagal tone uh, the vagal tone basically is the strength of communication between brain and body the more we heighten the vagal tone the better the connection there is and so we find that our brain body and behavior are becoming more and more congruent and over time what we find is that action and awareness suddenly merge and there is no distinction between what happens through our instincts and what happens in our behavior and what we desire so ultimately this is what leads to what we call the flow states and heightened awareness and um, greater productivity and creativity so what we've also found is that heightening the vagal tone can actually boost your immune system and boost um, the ability to recover from various illnesses so there's been studies on using vagal tone as a treatment for depression and chronic fatigue syndrome and it's also been used for rheumatoid arthritis and in all these instances the body is able to come back to a natural state of balance but without causing any other side effects when we dive deeper into why this connection is so important we find that by heightening our vagal tone we actually bring the body into a parasympathetic state 
and once the body is in this state which is unnatural baseline it is far more flexible into going into heightened states and because the vagal tone is high it is much more likely to return back to its baseline much more quickly. The way we measure this is through what we call heart rate variability and heart rate variability really is the moment to moment fluctuations in your heart rate. The higher the heart rate variability, the better your vagal tone. And basically what this means is that if, for example, you feel threatened or you go into a state of anger or any of the other emotions that you might not feel comfortable with, you can fully feel that emotion, but then de decelerate back to your normal state uh, very, very quickly as well. This ability to switch between state is the response of the heart. So when the heart rate rises, you can very quickly go into fight or flight and decelerate back into the parasympathetic once the danger is over. Today what we face is a lot of threats which live inside our own heads and they're not actual threats that we need to be responding through the fight or flight response. And because of this heightened threat response, we see that there is so much um, dysregulation in the body because the mind is fighting against things using the bodily processes, but there is no actual danger. The threat is created in our own minds. This is so apparent in society that the fight or flight response is actually becoming the baseline of our society so much so that if we are not busy if we're not creating drama we find that these they, this becomes uncomfortable so when someone says i'm busy we think that's productive that is good when someone is um, expressing uh, various different emotions but without a, a filter on it we find that that can be quite threatening on other people but if you are able to express your emotion as is, as raw and as comfortable as it can be, but then return back to baseline, then it is a very powerful emotional feedback loop that uh, we are quite losing in society. This emotional feedback loop is required so that um, it causes a learning behavior in the other person. Without that feedback, often a lot of things go unspoken and unsaid and resentment and other forms of um, maladaptive thought processes start to occur. So there are so many benefits to heightening your own vagal tone, but then how do you do it? So this is what I'd like to get into now. The first way you can heighten the vagal tone is through your breathing. And you might wonder, well, if breathing is such a natural process, why do I need to train it? Why do I need to train something that happens by itself? And this is where I will bring your attention to the fact that when we are frightened, when we are threatened, when we feel uneasy, we tend to hold our breath. And the moment we do that, the heart starts to accelerate because there is less oxygen reaching the rest of the organs. So the heart is accelerating to provide both oxygen and nourishment to the body. The longer we hold our breath, the more agitated our system becomes. And so in order to bring the system back into harmony, we use something called vagal breathing which is simply exhaling twice as long as the inhale and this works so simply because it's hardwired into our biology every time we inhale the heart rate rises and every time we exhale the heart rate slows down and by prolonging the exhale we are giving the body uh, an idea of feeling safe. This happens quite instinctually when, um, for example, we evade a threat that was actually not there and we do a sigh, we go, ah, and that naturally relaxes the body. So it's inbuilt into our own biology, but 
we can also train it and train it to the point where we actually don't need to be aware of it. So as a practice, it's great in that it is auto-responsive, but over time, you will not need to practice breathing. It will be uh, autonomous. The second way you can train your vagal tone is through cold water therapy. And cold water is actually extremely beneficial for the nervous system. And this is because it activates what we call the mammalian dive reflex, which is basically an instinct every time you go underwater. And this instinct is there to slow down your heart rate to conserve oxygen while you're underwater. So for example, if you're on land, you can hold your breath for say a minute, but underwater, because of the mammalian dive reflex, you will be able to hold your breath for at least twice as long. And what this also does is that even under pressure, your heart rate will still slow down. So for example, if you are doing push-ups on land, if you do 10 push-ups, there's a high chance that your heart rate would rise. But underwater, if you start doing 10 push-ups, your heart rate will actually slow down to conserve more oxygen. So by activating the mammalian dive reflex, by putting cold water on your face or doing cold water dousing is a very quick and easy way to get out of the fight or flight and stress responses. So because it's an instinct, it will happen by itself, it is automatic. The third way you can heighten your vagal tone is through your own skin. You might not realize this, but the skin is in fact the largest organ of the body and it communicates so much of our own intentions. For example, if we are feeling nervous, but we are putting a smile on, on our face, this is actually creating a dissonance between what you're communicating through your body and what you are communicating verbally. And um, often this disconnect can lead to uh, misinterpretations in people because their own body is actually saying something else but they're hearing something different and this can lead to mistrust and so much so that you might even find it threatening to live in your own skin. You might start fighting against your own body and this can lead to anorexia or bulimia. And one of the biggest components of returning the nervous system back into a parasympathetic state is by allowing the body, the skin, to find relaxation. And you can do this through therapeutic touch, but um, simply touch alone isn't enough. If you are feeling threatened, you might find that uh, simply giving a hug might not uh, actually feel that good because you can hug someone and still feel tense. So a lot of the work of rehabbing the tactile sense is through rehabbing touch. And one of the most easiest ways you can do this is by walking barefoot. And uh, the foot itself is your way of grounding to the earth. And so when you're walking, if you relax your foot on impact, it means that um, you're actually making a connection with the ground and this also means that you're focusing on the step that you're taking right now instead of what you need to do next. And not only is this a metaphor, but it will really reshape the way that you walk and also it will create a, a gentleness in your own body because you're not running away anymore. You are taking the step that you need to take right now. The fourth way we can heighten our vagal tone is through singing. And singing by its very nature is beneficial because it prolongs the exhale and therefore allows the nervous system to relax. But there's also a second more profound benefit to singing and this is because it allows us to express the joys of our own heart. And here I'd like to bring your attention to a special form of singing which is called chanting 
or devotional songs. Devotion often has a negative connotation to it because it's associated with religion or some form of worship. However, the devotion that I'm talking about is the devotion to your own heart and when we are singing devotional songs often it is coming from Sanskrit mantras and it's mantras that we don't quite understand so when you start singing for the first time the mind will find resistance to this it won't understand why you're singing something that has no meaning uh, or meaning associated to it and this is precisely why we do it and it, it reaches a certain point where the mind eventually just gives up and surrenders to the heart and this is the point where the heart erupts with joy and we're able to have the full expression of the heart without the judgment the mind places on it the fifth way you can heighten your vagal tone is through laughter and not only does laughter release tension in moments that are becoming too serious but it also increases your lifespan. One of the questions that I frequently ask elderly couples is what keeps two people together in a relationship and one of the most frequent answers I receive is the fact that they laugh together and not only does laughter allow people to be silly and make jokes and have fun but it then allows people to also create long lasting bonds so highly recommend being joyous and fun and silly together to increase not only the friendship that you have but also your longevity the sixth way that you can heighten your vagal tone is through movement and not any movement will suffice. In fact, movement can be corrosive if it's driven simply through the mind. The best movements are those where both the mind and body are connected. Practices that actually connect the breath takes movement even further. And this is one way of evoking instinct in your movements. So movement is probably reaching the height of its potential when action and awareness suddenly merge and you are able to reach a state of flow this is the height of your own ability and this is where instinct is operating at its fullest capacity so not only does movement allow you to find a gap between your own thoughts and simply be absorbed by this moment it also brings tremendous joy when you enter flow. The seventh way we can heighten our vagal tone is by experiencing nature. And when we return to nature, we find that it has an aliveness that our own bodies respond to. Our bodies actually crave nature because it, it is when our senses are heightened and we truly get to experience this moment. When we're in nature, our thoughts and feelings start to subside and our minds start to experience an emptiness. But amongst all of this, we feel more connected and we find our place amongst it all. In this video, you have learned seven different ways to heighten your vagal tone. And you don't have to practice all of this. Even if you practice just one of these techniques, you'll find profound benefit in your own well-being and in your own life. So I highly recommend practicing one of these techniques at least once a day and seeing the benefits for your own self. And if you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more interesting videos on the brain, body and behavior topic.